Welcome back! As you know, I am Eli, the computer guy, here for the Daily Blob, where I shake my brain and nipples every day to get some of that dirty, dirty YouTube money so I can afford to provide you folks hands-on technology education in Durham, North Carolina. Free to the end user education, you simply go to Silicon Dojo, silicondojo.com, take a look at what our schedule is, you can sign up for a class, you come to Durham, and you learn. We're having a class on AI and web scraping coming up on November 19th. We have many more classes coming down the pike, so go to the website to take a look if you are interested in attending one of those in-person classes. Do remember, free to the user is not actually free. There's a donor, lock bo donor box link down below if you want to throw a couple of dollars in. And I have to say, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. This, this, my friends, is the technology industry I know and love. This, this is the backbiting, passive, aggressive, type A, Aspie uh, industry that I fell in love with so many years ago. So I think this is kind of interesting with the whole AI arms race. And one of the big points with this is also to prove that with AI, that we are not dealing with a mature technology step. One of the big problems that I see with a lot of people nowadays when they talk about artificial intelligence is they talk about this as if it is a mature stack. What do we mean by a mature stack? We basically mean things like web services, like DNS. DNS is DNS, right? It's boring as dirt. It's, it's required, you need it, but it's boring as dirt. File services, boring as dirt, right? There are mature stacks. We all know how to do it. People figured out how to do this crap like 25 years ago. To say we get incremental improvements every year is an overstatement. We get like incremental improvements like every decade or so. We know how to deploy it, right? If, if you, if you want to create a, a file storage server farm, you know how to do it. Basically swipe the credit card, hire the right people, they build that crap out, right? You know, there's a couple of, there's a couple of questions on operating systems and licenses and that type of thing, but otherwise it's pretty easy. One of the big things to remember about the AI uh, tech stack is that it's immature. We really don't know what this entire tech stack is frankly going to look like in five years, right? So, you know, we've got NVIDIA, NVIDIA is doing their thing, and we know that China, China's creating their own AI tech stack. But beyond that, right, Google, Google's pushing hard into their TPUs, uh, tensor processing units. TPUs have been around for like 10 years. I remember talking about TPUs back in like 2015 or so, uh, when they started talking about them at uh, CES years and years ago. For whatever reason, they didn't really take off. Now it seems like they might be taking off, right? That, that is one way to do artificial intelligence. We've talked about this with ASICs uh, processors. These are processors that are designed basically to only do one specific task. There are many companies out there that are that are building, that are creating their own ASICs processors uh, in order to do, do things like inference and that type of deal. And so the curious thing to be thinking about with AI is we we do not know what this tech tech stack will look like in 2030, right? In 2030, there will be the A plus. There will be the CCNA of AI. You'll have a whole bunch of kids that think that's the future. They're going to five, put the $5,000 on the table. They're going to get their AI certification. And then they're going to go work at McDonald's. <laughs> Kind of like CCNAs do currently, right? Anyways, by, by, by 2030, it'll be a stable stack, but it's not now. And that's where it's kind of curious with NVIDIA, because with NVIDIA, one of the big points with NVIDIA uh, isn't simply their hardware. So you got NVIDIA hardware and, and no snark on the hardware. Uh, again, I, I haven't heard anybody really say it's bad. <laughs> it's like, like, like whatever you say about NVIDIA, the, hard, the hardware is fine. Prices are through the roof, but the hardware is fine. But the thing that really locks in, the thing that really locks people in to the uh, NVIDIA stack, and you know, we talk about the stack, all the technologies that are involved is CUDA. So CUDA, C-U-D-A, uh, basically is their software architecture that allows you to design AI applications to fully use all of the resources of the NVIDIA hardware, right? So this is where you can do, do uh, parallel computing and replicate, basically where, where you know, we talk about, you know, having a server farm of 100,000 GPUs, CUDA is what allows you to actually turn that something that's to usable, right? It's not just about having 100,000 GPUs. It's about having a system where you can actually utilize those GPUs in a semi-efficient manner, right? And so CUDA is the big deal. That's one of the big things with China creating their own AI stack. A big, a big question out there is what happens once they de develop their version of CUDA, right? Everybody starts building on uh, China's version of CUDA. And if it doesn't simply doesn't work with NVIDIA, well, right, if I've built on this software architecture, I need to, to buy the hardware that, that will run this software architecture, that type of thing. Well, the curious thing now is Microsoft. Microsoft is getting into this particular game uh, to basically dick punch NVIDIA. 
which is something I always like to see. It's like, yay! It's MMA for, uh, for Silicon Valley. And uh, yeah, this could actually be exceedingly, exceedingly significant, like really significant, like no shit, this could be big deal. Uh, Microsoft has reportedly developed toolkits to break NVIDIA's CUDA dominance, slashing inference costs with AMD AI GPUs. And so one of the things like when the mobile world, so you go back, 10 years ago or more. All right, one of the big problems for uh, app developers is you started having multiple platforms. So you go back 20 years ago, everybody was on Windows. <laughs> it was like Mac existed, <laughs> Mac existed. <laughs> everybody was on Windows, right? So if you want to create an app, if you want to create your next whatever big ass app, you would just do it for Windows. The problem is you hit about 2010 and you have iOS devices. So you have, you have uh, iPhones, Somewhere around there, you had iPads. Uh, you also have Android phones and Android tablets, and then you had web interfaces. And so one of the big uh, problems uh, that, that coders ran into uh, is even if they knew how to code for one platform, that was only for one platform. So basically, every time you created a version of your app, you needed to create it for, uh, for, for iOS for a phone and for a tablet, for Android for a phone and a tablet and a web app at the very least. So all of a sudden, you're essentially porting one app app five different ways, which really kind of sucks. And so that's where they came out with frameworks, uh, things like React, React Native, Flutter. And what these were is essentially code once, deploy anywhere. The idea being is you create the code for the app and then you can simply export to the device you want it to run on. Like, okay, here's all the code for the app. Here's the version for iOS. Here's a version for iPad. Here's a version for, right, that type of thing. And so what's kind of interesting here is with all this AI hardware that's coming out, one of the big problems is, again, for any company that's dealing with AI, is they're now dealing with different so software architectures. So, uh, so um, NVIDIA obviously has their CUDA. Um, AMD, I think it's called Rock M, R O C M, uh, is their particular thing. Again, you've got the, uh, the 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 Chinese doing what the hell the Chinese are doing. You have Google doing what Google's doing. You have all these different companies. And so what's kind of interesting here is Microsoft's getting into the game. And Microsoft, major major company, right? I think they're four trillion dollars. <laughs> right? They're they're they are a mere four trillion dollar company. But my, Microsoft Microsoft's business, right, is in supporting is supporting everybody, right? Anybody who runs a server, anybody who's running a workstation, the whole nine yards. And so for them, having to deal with one architecture is a big problem, but it's also a big opportunity. If they can create uh, toolkits, toolkits, frameworks, whatever you want to call it, so that you can run, you can write your AI software and then be able to deploy it to any hardware that you want, that is an incredible value proposition. The thing with this, uh, when we go into it, is uh, with these kind of toolkits that they're creating, it doesn't necessarily give you all of the possibilities uh, of the uh, of the AI hardware, but as I've said many times, is in the real world, you normally don't need everything that the AI hardware can do, or that the hardware can do, right? You're told, right? Here, here is the feature set of the product that you purchased, and here's what you actually use, right? That's the real world. So the curious thing here is if Microsoft creates these toolkits, right once deployed to any AI hardware, and if 90% of the use cases only need this, this, you know, a very small number of features, that, that might be do a hell of a lot of damage to NVIDIA. And especially if they can put a chink in that armor, if they can, if they can start to break NVIDIA's dominance, the curious thing with NVIDIA being a $5 trillion company, there's a long way to fall. There's a long way to fall. Microsoft is exploring ways to leverage the stack of its AMD GPUs for inference workloads as the company develops toolkits that convert NVIDIA models into ROCKM supported code. So apparently it's converting the CUDA into the Rock M. One of the reasons NVIDIA has managed to uh, maintain its dominance in the AI space is that the firm has a robust CUDA software ecosystem in place, which its competitors, such as AMD, cannot currently rival. Efforts have been made to allow cross-platform uh, support to, uh, to, of software stacks, but we haven't seen a solution that has become mainstream. However, according to a high-ranking Microsoft employee, it is reported that the tech giant has developed toolkits that allow the firm to run CUDA code on AMD GPUs by translating it into Rock M compatible version. So the thing to be thinking about this too with any of these products, right? Not only do you need to have the idea, but you need to be able to fund creating the idea. You then need to give people the comfort 
to be able to use the idea, um, and then you need to show that it's actually being used. A, an interesting thing with Microsoft doing this, so if you just had a normal software developer, a normal software developer would do this, they build the thing, and a lot of people will question, should we use it, should we not? The cool part about this is if, if Microsoft starts using this internally, then this is their product that they're going to keep maintaining regardless of how well it sells or how well it gets used because they're actually using it and they prove the viability of the product by using it in their production systems, right? That right there is just a tremendous value um, and it'll be curious to see how NVIDIA deals with this. Breaking CUDA's dominance isn't an easy task as the software ecosystem is so integral to the AI industry that its adoption is almost ubiquitous, even in nations like China. However, Microsoft's toolkit, uh, mentioned by the employee, likely employs a route that has been in the market for quite some time. One way to perform the CUDA to ROCKM translation is through a runtime compatibility layer, which enables CUDA API calls to be translated into ROCKM without requiring complete source code rewrites. Quote, we built some toolkits to help convert, uh, convert like CUDA CUDA models to rock M so you could use it on an AMD like a 300X. We have had a lot of inquiries about what is our path with AMD, the 400X and the 450X. We're actually working with AMD on that to see what we can do to maximize that. And so the other thing too is if Microsoft starts developing this product that converts CUDA to rock M and then Oh, AMD sees what they're doing, and then they start supporting Microsoft, what Microsoft is trying to do, that could create a nice little virtuous cycle for AMD. However, due to Rock M uh, still being relatively, quote, immature software stack, there are several API calls or pieces of code in CUDA that have no mapping with AMD software, which in some cases collapses the performance. Another possible variant of the toolkit being mentioned here is likely an end-to-end -end cloud migration tool that integrates with Azure targeting, targeting both AMD and NVIDIA instances. Of course, this does bring uh, problems when conversions happen on a large scale, but by the looks of it, the toolkits developed by Microsoft appear to be in confined use. So there we go. So Microsoft might be creating toolkits that allow you to, uh, to write CUDA and have it run on AMD. And then once it runs on AMD, how much work will it be to, to run on other things? So basically, again, kind of like in the mobile world, you can write once, run anywhere. Um, I think this will be kind of uh, curious uh, going forward, right? Because there's a lot of companies out there, right? Uh, NVIDIA is incredibly expensive. Simply getting getting your hands on the hardware might be incredibly difficult. They want to go with other vendor hardware vendors, but for whatever reason, again with the, the software stack or whatever else, maybe the other vendors don't quite work properly. If my, if Microsoft comes out with this product to allow you to essentially again write once, run anywhere, uh, that could be incredibly powerful. And at that at that moment, that breaks that breaks, you know. NVIDIA's complete and utter dominance. That's the other interesting thing to be thinking about too, again, with the whole, the whole Chinese, the, the GPUs and all that type of thing. Again, what if, they, what if they come up with their own version, right? R writing CUDA and that will run on Huawei equipment. Right? I think that's one of the, the, uh, the things to be thinking about with this. So it'll be curious. It'll be curious to see how far this goes. I do, I do think this is a bit of a slippery slope um, for where things go with NVIDIA and where we might we might see just a massive, oh, a massive amount of damage done to their market share if other people can use other people's hardware relatively easily. So what do you think about this? What do you think about Microsoft coming up with toolkits so you can write once and deploy anywhere, right? Write your code in CUDA, run it on NVIDIA, write it, run it on AMD, maybe run it on TPUs, maybe run it on a Huawei. What do you think about that type of thing? What do, you, what do you think about Microsoft finally getting back to what Microsoft does best, fucking over other tech companies? This is what I expect out of Microsoft. I don't expect partnership out of Microsoft. I don't expect playing nice out of Microsoft. I expect incredibly dirty, you know, gamesmanship out of this company. Does that, does that kind of put a smile on your face? Like, yes, Microsoft is back in the game. But being a bag of dicks, in a bag of dicks. I don't know. Put your thoughts. Put your thoughts down below. If you like these videos, give us a thumbs up. If you hate these videos, give us a thumbs down. Call me amazing. Call me a dumbass. Just be a real Lutnik and put your comment down below. Do remember what I actually care about is Silicon Dojo, SiliconDojo.com. Free the Indies or hands-on technology education that empowers you to do whatever the hell it is you want to do in Durham, North Carolina. We have a class coming up on um 
AI and web scraping on November 19th. We have many more classes coming up. Take a look at siliconDojo.com to see what our schedule is. Do remember, free user is not free. That's why I keep shaking my brain nipples every day. There's a donor box link down below. And with that, see y'all later.